Well, thanks, Jacqueline, and I, I appreciate you having me, and uh, thank you for being here today. As she said, my name is Chris McDaniel, and I'm the state senator for Kentucky's 23rd district. More importantly, I'm a small business owner who employs 50 Kentuckians and am concerned about the direction that our nation has taken over the past eight years. That's why I'm honored to be here today as part of the groundswell of support that's going to make certain that on November the 8th, we make Donald Trump the next president of the United States of America. Now, the effects of a presidency reach far beyond the confines of the Oval Office. Think of how many times in any industry we see the negative effect of bureaucratic decisions, decisions that are regularly handed down from ca appointed cabinet secretaries and their deputies. When you have a chief executive who believes that businesses are always up to no good and that those who fight through starting up a business, surviving recessions, making payroll every week can never pay enough for the free version of America that Hillary Clinton so readily espouses, you have a chief executive who not only doesn't understand the fundamental realities of our economy, but also fails to recognize the basic fabric of our nation. If there is one thing that we undeniably know, it is that people must have an active role in anything they do if they're going to take pride in their actions and accomplishments. That means that college can't be free. Housing cannot be free. Health care cannot be free. There are ways to earn your way into all of these. I had free health care when I was 19 years old. I had free housing when I was 19 years old. I had free college tuition when I was 19 years old. I earned free by putting my right hand up and pledging to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And then, like millions of others, I very simply left the Army and went straight to work in the private sector, earning a living and being a productive member of our society. Now, employers all over this nation and this commonwealth are hurting for workers to fill their jobs, but are regularly confounded by government programs that make it more financially rewarding for entry-level workers to stay on government programs than to return to work. Employers are competing with drug use and an ever-expanding segment of society that engages in that behavior and believes that there are no consequences for their actions. Employers are competing with government regulations that drive the costs of providing good benefits for our employees higher and higher. Things like Obamacare's mandate for community rating that when implemented will more than double, double the amount that small businesses like mine have to pay for the opportunity to provide good, affordable health care for our employees. Barack Obama has been an unmitigated disaster for American business. He has given us the highest corporate tax rates on the planet and a regulatory environment that has killed hundreds of thousands of jobs. Hillary Clinton will be more of the same. Barack Obama pledged that if you want to open a coal-fired power plant, he'll make sure to put you out of business. Hillary Clinton has gone a step further and said publicly that she's going to put a lot of coal miners out of work. At least with Barack Obama, you could argue that his career as a community organizer had left him so bereft of basic economic logic that he didn't realize that when he shut down coal-fired power plants, he was going to put a lot of coal miners in Kentucky out of work. With Hillary Clinton, you have no such leap to make. She is willing to admit and to be proud of the fact that she is going to leave thousands of our most vulnerable citizens with no opportunity to earn a living. Adam Smith observed as far back as 1776 that the productivity of a nation could be measured by the quality of its labor force and the degree to which they're employed. Kentucky lags dramatically behind the national average in labor participation rate. In fact, as we we're frequently reminded by Secretary Heiner, if Kentucky just met the national average for labor participation rate, we would have 150,000 more Kentuckians employed. That would be 150,000 more taxpayers, 150,000 more people with the pride of providing for their families, 150,000 more people who could be engaged in the growth of our great commonwealth. The sad reality of Hillary Clinton's statement is this. Instead of a plan to help business get business engaged and get these people back to work, 
She wants them to stay out of work so they can depend on the government and people like her for their livelihoods. Now, some people are saying, McDaniel, you have no heart. These people need the government. They need a handout. And I will challenge you with this. Since Lyndon Johnson's Great Society, what government program has moved the masses from back-breaking poverty and into the middle class? What government program has given people the quality of life and sense of accomplishment that a free market and meaningful employment give? The answer is none. Now, if you're from eastern or northern Kentucky, you know and probably revere the name of Monsignor Ralph Biden. Those of us from northern Kentucky know him as the legendary priest who traveled to eastern Kentucky to minister to and help some of our Commonwealth's poorest residents. Those of you from the east know him as the founder of the Christian Appalachian Project, one of the most successful return to work programs ever implemented in that part of the state. In fact, his success was so legendary that he was honored by Governor Paul Patton for his economic development work. One of his famous mottos, though, was that his group would roll up our sleeves and get the job done. That's the church helping the community. That's the community helping the community. That's private business helping the community. In his autobiography, Called to the Mountains, he says, very sadly, that one of the worst things that ever happened to Eastern Kentucky was Lyndon Johnson's Great Society, because as he observed, it failed to bring meaningful employment and it robbed people of both pride and hope. My friends, more government has never been, nor never will be the answer to all that ills this nation. In robbing Bernie Sanders of the Democratic nomination, Hillary Clinton helped cover up the fact that she and her party believe that they always have and always will have the best answer for how you should run your life. Under President Trump, there will be tax reform unprecedented since the days of President Reagan. He will simplify taxes for everyone and streamline deductions, which will lower taxes and make raising a family more affordable. He will simplify the income tax bracket from seven to three and exclude child care expenses from taxation, which for most of us who are working families are one of our very largest expenses. Further, he will limit taxation on a business income to 15% for every business, which will allow small businesses across the country to invest more of our money into our businesses and our employees, thereby releasing the full power of the American spirit of ingenuity and resourcefulness. Now, among the many ills that Hillary Clinton and her cronies will refuse to acknowledge is the basic facts that the things that they propose are not free. In fact, our nation already has a debt of over $19 trillion and an unfunded liability of more than twice that amount. I know you heard uh, Congressman Guthrie allude to this in his speech. According to the Congressional Budget Office, in 2009, the year that President Obama took office, that same $19 trillion in debt was $8.2 trillion in debt. As a percentage of GDP, the federal debt under President Obama has ballooned from 82 percent to over 105 percent. That is nearly $60,000 for every man, woman, and child in the United States and 559 percent of our annual revenues. Under Hillary Clinton, in her version of America, that will only balloon. For some of us, living free means the opportunity to succeed to the maximum of our God-given potential. For Hillary Clinton, in her side, living free means allowing someone else to pay for your free stuff to the tune of an additional $2 trillion. As the, Senate's, the chairman of the Senate's Appropriation and Revenue Committee, I can assure you that free does not mean what Hillary Clinton wants you to think it means. Under Obamacare, the cost for just the expansion population in Medicaid, that's when we went from 100% to 138% of the federal poverty level, the cost of that in 2022 will be $350 million just in Kentucky tax revenue. That doesn't account for the fact that that's only 10% of the total cost. Your federal liability will be nine times that amount for that population. That means that an average family of four will be paying an additional Kentucky tax of over $300 per year for one segment of one program implemented under this administration. My friends, we simply cannot afford free. 
Secretary Grimes very astutely observed that Secretary Clinton's foreign policy experience is immense, and it is. Internationally, our reputation has suffered nearly irreparable harm under President Obama and Hillary Clinton as his Secretary of State and their failed leadership. Under a Hillary Clinton regime, there is no telling what lies we might get about foreign policy. Maybe it will be that she's dodging sniper fire, like the lies from Bosnia. Maybe it will be she had no way of knowing what happened, like the lies about Benghazi. Or maybe it will simply be that she isn't going to tell us like the 30 thousand emails that still reside on her personal server from her time in public capacity as Secretary of State. It's time for Hillary and the Obama White House to drop the charade. Admit that they paid a $400 million ransom to the world's leading sponsor of state terrorism. Hillary Clinton's support for this dangerous blunder in Iran shows once again that she does not have the judgment to be President of the United States. The reckless arrangement is not only a breach of long-standing United States policy, but it means millions of dollars potentially finding their way into the pockets of terrorist organizations while putting a price on the head of every single American. These types of deals weaken broader U.S. policy in the Middle East and compromise our national security by putting Americans traveling abroad at risk. A Hillary Clinton presidency will only mean more of the corrupt bargaining with rogue regimes which has compromised the security of the United States. As we have seen from Minnesota to Florida, the threat of terrorism is not confined to the Middle East or even to Europe. It has reached our continent, and it is no longer as coordinated as in previous generations. Small cells and radicalized individuals are taking over the work of inflicting damage on our people and on the psyche of the American public. When the terrorists feel emboldened to operate freely within the confines of our borders, their attacks will only intensify and their ability to recruit new operatives will be unfettered. A Trump administration will work with local and federal law enforcement to establish new protocols for identifying signs of radicalization. President Trump will seek to lift up moderate and reformist voices in our migrant communities and strengthen the bonds of partnership towards rooting out extremism and its networks. By defining the enemy, we will develop the capacity and the means to disrupt and dismantle the networks that already exist within our country. Making our enemy look weak, helpless, and ineffective, not apologizing for ourselves, will dry up their recruits. My friends, we can no longer ignore this nation's ever ballooning debt. We cannot ignore the fact that there is an ever-growing segment of our society who thinks that everything should be free. And we can no longer ignore the fact that there are international threats that have made their way to our borders, which is why on November the 8th, we must elect Donald Trump as the 45th President of the United States.